So this is stoichiometry example problem number two, podcast number two. Uh, in this one, I'm going to do three more stoichiometry problems. Now, you, if you're a pro at this or you're finding that this is very simple and repetitive, then what I recommend doing is um, pausing it right now, doing the problem that's on the screen, and then hitting play, watching how I do it, make sure that you get the same answer that I do, and then repeat that with each of the next two example problems. So there's going to be a total of three example problems in this problem. Given the following equation, if 89.5 grams of silver were produced in this chemical reaction, so we're talking about that substance there, how many grams of copper were reacted? So, again, start with your given. 89.5 grams of silver. Set up your little conversion chart. You know the first thing you need to do is, of course, that's right, convert to moles. When in doubt, mole it out. So I go to my weight of silver. So I don't use silver a lot, so I went to my periodic table, and I've got 107.87. So it's 107.87 grams. And some people say, well, Mr. Siegel, how did you know it was silver? How did you know it wasn't the AgNO3? Well, you read the problem. I mean, this problem was specific where it actually wrote out the formula Ag. But just reread the problem and make sure you're using the right substance. The number one mistake that people do here is they use the wrong substance in the chemical reaction. So they do everything correct. They get an answer, and they look at it and go, wait, why is that not right? Oh, I used the wrong substance. That's the most common response. So just be careful. So now that I'm in moles of silver, I know the coefficient for the silver has to be on the bottom. I'm looking for copper. There is one copper used in this chemical reaction. So now I'm in moles of copper by con using the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. Question asks for how many grams. So one mole goes on the bottom. And the weight of copper from the periodic table goes on the top, 63.55. whip out the handy dandy calculators so I've got parentheses 89.55 times 63.55 divided by parentheses 107 zero, 07 there we go point 0.87 times 2 close the parentheses BAM 26.4 is my final answer and of course it is grams of copper, and I want to leave it in three significant figures because there were one, two, three sig figs given in the given. Again, notice looks exactly the same. Um, the process doesn't change no matter which two substances you're comparing. Let's do the next example. Given the following reaction, how many grams of sodium chloride, NaCl, are produced when 80 grams of oxygen are produced? So this is a great example of where I'm actually comparing a product to a product. So but it doesn't change how I do the problem. Start by writing the given. Here we go. By the end of these, you should almost be able to finish my sentences because you notice I'm using the same words over and over because the process doesn't change. So one mole goes on the top because when in doubt, mole it out. See, I like to do this in a class where the whole class yells it at the same time. You're sitting here watching it by yourself and you don't understand. So I've got two auctions. You're probably in your room yelling mole it out and your parents don't understand what's going on. So now I've got one mole on the top, 32 grams, which is the weight from the periodic table for two oxygens on the bottom. I'm comparing oxygen to sodium chloride. So it's three O2s to two NaCl's. The question asks for how many grams. So I put one mole back on the bottom and I convert to grams on the top for a sodium chloride. So I know sodium is 23. I know chlorine is 35.45. So therefore it's 58.45. Now if you're one of those people who just loves to use 22.99 for sodium, be my guest. You're going to get 58.44. That's fine. It's the same number, folks. So don't freak out if your numbers are ever so slightly different than mine. As long as your, the math makes sense and your final answer is around mine, that's all that matters. I like to convert to 23 for sodium. I find it's an easier number to use. And it's not that far off. So again, multiply everything on the top. So 80 times 2 times 58.45, close the parentheses, divided by, open the parentheses, 32 times 3, 
close the parentheses, hit enter, and you get 97.4. I want three sig figs, so I'm going to round right to that digit there. 97.4 grams of NaCl. Also remember, something I haven't reminded you of this previously is don't forget the units. These are not just numbers. These mean stuff. So make sure that you put the unit on the end, grams of NaCl. Okay, worth a half a point on the test every time you do it. So make sure you do it. Okay, and then the last example problem I'm going to do in this section of the stoichiometry problems. Great example of too much information. Molten iron and carbon monoxide are produced in a blast furnace by the reaction of iron 3 oxide and coke, pure carbon. Okay, uh, Coke is a, is, a, is a name for pure carbon. If 25 kilograms of pure iron 3 oxide is used, how many kilograms of iron can be produced? The reaction is da 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 da. Okay, great situation where they've got a lot of extra information, which I don't care about, plus I've got a little twist in this problem, which I haven't seen before. They used kilograms. And remember that a kilogram is a thousand grams. So 25 kilograms is 25,000 grams. So when I do this problem, it's going to be 25123 grams of iron 3 oxide. But once I've tackled that twist, it's pretty much the same problem again. So when in doubt, mole it out. That's right. Good. Uh, I go to my calculator because even though I did this just a few minutes ago, I do not remember what the numbers were. So we're going to go to 55.85 times 2 plus 48, which I think is like 159.7. There it is, 159.7 grams of the iron 3 oxide. I'm converting between, I'm in iron 3 oxide, so 1 iron oxide, iron 3 oxide goes on the bottom, and I want to go to iron, 2Fe. It's looking for the mass of the iron, so I have to find, I have to convert back to grams when I'm all done, and we got 55.85 goes on the top. So now I pull out the calculator and I multiply all this stuff together. So I've got 25, 1, 2, 1,000, times two irons times 55.85 close the parentheses divided by my 159.8.7 which happens to be the answer from the previous problem so I'm just going to use second answer if you don't know how to do that just type in 159.7 hit enter and my answer comes out to 17,485.9 so 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 on and so on okay but I want to convert to three sig figs so it should be 17500 grams of the iron. Second biggest mistake in these problems is not answering the question. The question did not say how many grams. The question says how many kilograms. So since I've got 17,500 grams and I know that every one gram is equal to, a th I'm sorry, every one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. If I divide by a thousand, I get 17.5 kilograms of iron. And that's the correct answer. And that's the end of the second podcast of examples related to stoichiometry. Again, if you're having any trouble, go back, look at them again, hit up the review sheet so you can see tons and tons and tons of examples. In the next podcast, we'll start tackling more advanced stoichiometry problems.